Bundy's Garage, John Bundy here. Today we're working on a 2005 Acura RSX. We're going to be doing the rear brakes, rear brake pads and rear brake calipers. Uh, as usual, I'm just going to be doing one side because the other side will be exactly the same. So, uh, the owner is digging through the glove box right now to find the lock for this lug nut right here. If you can't find them, I'm going to torch this rim off with an oxyacetylene torch and uh, let him figure it out by himself. <laughs> and he found it! You want to loosen up the lug nuts before you prop up the car because if you don't, the wheel's just going to spin. So uh, if you already prop the car up, you're already one step forward too far. So drop it back down, loosen up the lug nuts. Alright, loosen up the lug nuts. The schlug nuts. My sweaty nuts. Right behind the, uh, right in front of the rear wheel, I should say, is there's a jack point right here. That's the only place you want to be putting the jack. To jack this car up. Otherwise, you run the risk of damaging panels. So, put it right there and start jacking the car up. All right, what you want to do next is take out all the uh, lug nuts. Pop the wheel and get it out of the way. Next thing you want to do is take off the brake caliper, but before I do that, I'm going to take off these uh, two screws that hold the rotor in. They put these in at factory. This is the first time they've ever been changed, and this car is right at 90,000 miles, so these are going to probably be stuck in there. I'm going to show you a couple tricks to get this out. Um, first, I'm going to spray this with penetrating oil to help soak it in on this side and the, and the um, driver side as well and I'll show you a trick to get these things out hopefully it works otherwise I have to bust out the big tool All right, I picked this up from Harbor Freight it comes in a pack of eight or six what I like about it it's steel all the way through and uh, th this is what you need to basically get these things off the trick trick that I learned you stick it in here and I'm gonna hit the end of it with a hammer I'm going to hit the end with a hammer at the same time while I'm hitting the end. I'm going to turn it. Ready, tidy, lefty, loosey. <laughs> yep, these things can be stuck on there. Lower one loose. So yeah, as you're as you're tapping the the screwdriver, try turning turning in as well at the same time, and uh, it'll break them loose. So they're both out. These two uh, bolts right here that hold the caliper in are 12 millimeter. You just need to loosen those up, pop this off, and then put the new brake pads in. And pull out the old rotor. There's two other bolts back here that hold the 
brake line in place. You have to take those off. They're 12 millimeter as well to give you more room to take the caliper, get the caliper out of the way. One side looks pretty good, the other side is not. You gotta take these two bolts off to remove the mounting, uh, the mounting bracket for the caliper to get the rotor off. have this all off I'm going to push the uh, piston back into the caliper and set it up for the uh, new brake pads which will be thicker than the old ones because they have all the material on them rotors just come straight off putting the new rotor on I'm also going to line up the, uh, the old, the old, uh, not the old, but where the screws were held into place from the factory, just so that holds the uh, rotor in place while I'm putting everything back together. You don't have to do this, it's just a, it's a step that makes things a little bit easier to put the screws back in. So you don't even have to tighten them very much, just snug. Bring this back on. Started, start the other one. All right, right here, here's the piston that goes into the caliper. Some pistons are, uh, all you have to do is get a C clamp to push it back in, and then some are uh, ones that you have to actually screw back in. This happens to be one that you have to screw back in. Typically, you can tell because if the piston is smooth, that typically means that you can just push it in with a C clamp. But if it has these grooves or notches, um, there's a special tool that's used to actually sit in here and you get a 3 8 ratchet and extension and turn it. But um, you can also use a pair of channel locks. So all you got to do is grab the outside just to get it big enough and just start turning it. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. And uh, just slowly but surely spin it back down. The reason you want to do this is because the new pads have all that new brake material on them, and if you don't do this, then you'll never get the uh, you'll never get this caliper to sit right. There just won't be enough room for them, physically enough room for uh, the caliper to sit there with the new brake pads. Okay, I uh, finished backing up the piston inside the caliper all the way. Now I'm going to do is put the the uh, brake pads back in. They just they're just slots on the back side as well and, and the front. So this is the sensor. This indicates when it wears down you'll hear a little like a little screeching sound and uh, that goes down into the back. Get that into place. Put the front one on. And bring the caliper back in. Push these bolts back in to get it to slide. And start running your bolts back down. And start the other. Always start these by hand. Don't use a machine or an air ratchet to start these because you could cross thread them. Then you will be in a world of hurt, dude. Okay, everything, everything else is in. The caliper's back in. 
caliper mold uh, caliper the caliper mounting bracket stayed up way too late last night brake pads rotor just don't forget these two 12 millimeter bolts back here that hold the brake line in as always start those by hand just make sure you get them back in place there's a huge you'll probably hear some weird sounds from the back of your car if you don't do this okay those are both started and just run them down and snug them up okay everything's back in place like I said I put these screws back in it's optional you don't have to put them back in and if you do just snug them you don't even have to make them tight the only reason I did that is to hold the rotor in place while I put everything else back on um, so what's left is just to put the wheel and I'm um, going to torque them down to about 80 foot pounds uh, I won't bore you with that but uh, that is how you change the rear brakes on 05 RSX. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe to my channel. Like always, uh, please leave comments, questions, concerns, and uh, I'll keep them rolling for you.